The first colligative property that we're going to talk about is vapor pressure. And with vapor pressure, we use something called Raoult's Law to calculate the vapor pressure. So Raoult's Law says that the vapor pressure of a solvent is proportional to its mole fraction in solution. So this also gives you a clue about which of those concentration units we're going to have to use for this calculation. So the equation that we end up with for this, the pressure over a solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the pressure, the vapor pressure over the pure solvent. So that's what that P with the little zero means, means pure solvent. And if we know that and the mole fraction of the solvent, we can get the vapor pressure over the solution. So this works best just by showing some examples. So I'm going to pause, write out this problem, and uh, then we will give it a try. So the first example is calculate the vapor pressure over a sugar water solution prepared by dissolving 100 grams of sucrose, which is C12H22O11, a non-electrolyte in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. And it also tells us, so we don't have to go look it up, the vapor pressure of pure water at 20 degrees is 17.54 torr. But if we didn't have this piece of information, the pure water vapor pressure, this is in an appendix or a data table somewhere. This is a value that you would be able to look up if you needed to. Okay, so we need the chi of the solvent and we're given the pure vapor pressure of the solvent. So most of our calculation is going to be around calculating the mole fraction of the solvent. So the example or the definition that I gave you earlier just had the mole fraction of the solute in it. Um, but for the mole fraction of anything, we can do the number of moles of that thing divided by the total number of moles. So if we want it for the solvent, It'll be number of moles of solvent divided by number of moles of everything that's in solution. So you'll notice that I didn't give you an equation with an I factor here. Now we have a non-electrolyte, so the I factor would be one, but vapor pressure is the case where the I factor um, is kind of hidden. So we're gonna do a second example after this where you have to take that into account. So this total moles part that goes into the denominator, the things that I have in solution, um, so solvent, I'm just gonna say number of moles of water, because that's my solvent. I have in solution water and sugar. So I need number of moles of water and I need number of moles of sugar in order to go forward with this calculation. So I'm not going to explicitly do those mole calculations. Um, this would be a good place in the video to pause and do those mole calculations on your own and then come back to see if we ended up in the same place. You should get number of moles of water is 5.549. So that's in the top of our fraction and then 5.549 plus 0.292 moles of sugar. And I'm just gonna put parentheses around those for safety to make sure that we don't accidentally uh, divide before adding uh, so that you get an appropriate fraction. 
and you should get 0 0.95. So the mole fraction of water in the solution is 0.95. So out of our whole solution, about 5% of it is sugar and 95% of it is water. So my vapor pressure over the solution is 0 0.95, which is the mole fraction of the solvent, times 17.54, which is the vapor pressure of pure water at 20 degrees. And this gives me 16.67 tor as the vapor pressure over my sugar water solution. Okay, um, so that was the first example. Our second example will be an ionic compound. So we're gonna have to worry about the I factor. Um, again, I'm gonna pause, take a minute to write this problem out and then we'll come back and work on it. So the second example says a solution contains 0.102 moles of calcium nitrate and 0.927 moles of water. Calculate the vapor pressure of the solution at 55 degrees Celsius. Assume complete dissociation of the solute. So this sentence right here, I'm gonna highlight it, that's our pretend that you're in a perfect world in terms of the I factor. Um, and then it also tells us that at 55 degrees, the pure vapor pressure of water is 118.1 torr. So the last part, if it wasn't given, we could go look it up, um, but we have that. So like with the last example, our focus is on getting the correct mole fraction for the solvent. So it's still moles of the solvent, so moles of water, divided by the total moles of everything in solution. It's just that because we have an ionic compound that's totally dissociated, our things in solution are more than they might appear from the problem. And we have to take into account that this is totally dissociated. So this total number of moles is the thing that will be affected by our kind of hidden I factor because the things that are in solution, well, it's the number of moles of water and if my calcium nitrate splits up, it's the number of moles of calcium two plus and the number of moles of nitrate, but you get two of those. So it's kind of like two N, NO3 minus, right? And where this came from is thinking about my calcium nitrate as a solid splitting up into calcium two plus and two NO3 minus. So this is why I have the number of moles of calcium and then two times the number of moles of nitrate. So very nicely, this problem doesn't make us calculate any of the mole values, um, but if we plug all of this in to get our mole fraction of the solvent, well, the water moles were 0.927. And then my total that's gonna go down here, again, I'll put it in parentheses just for safety. Um, in solution, I have water, so plus, so 0.927 plus, well, I have calcium ions. And if I had 0.102 moles of calcium nitrate, I have 0.102 moles of calcium two plus. And then I also have two times 0.102 moles of nitrate. Now, you don't have to write it this way if you don't want. I mean, we could, instead of the plus two, count water, got it, count calcium, got it, count the first nitrate and then count the second nitrate, right? Because this is like, if I asked you for an I factor, I get one calcium and two nitrates. This is like an I factor of three. 
I just didn't have a place in my equation to put that I value. So I've got 0.927 divided by 0.927 plus 102 plus 102 plus 102 because my calcium nitrate split up into three ions. This gives me an I factor of 0.752. So when you have a lot of solute particles in solution, the proportion of your solvent goes way down just because you have a lot of other stuff around. So for this solution, the pressure, or the vapor pressure over that solution is 0.752 times the pure vapor pressure, which was 118.1 torr. And so the vapor pressure here is down to 88.8 .8 torr.